What's up guys, Bad Medicine is here having a little bit of butterbeer before we dive into our Harry Potter round table. So I looked online, well actually my lovely wife looked online and found a delicious butterbeer recipe, or not, I guess we'll, we'll find out right find now. Out. I didn't do it exactly precise, but we'll see how well it what goes. What do you mean not exactly precise? Just, you just trick off. You've got it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, there we go, cheers. cheers to you, mate. Good job, answer. Oh my god, that's actually yeah. really, like, really yeah. good. That's that is really, really awesome, good. So actually. I can see why uh, Ron drank a ton of this <laughs> in the god. movie. That's excellent. So, cheers to my wife for finding a delicious recipe, and cheers to you, our fans, and for thank you once again for voting on Harry Potter. Can we discuss how you look like Magic Mike, like Harry Potter Magic Mike, like a stripper with like that thing around? Somebody call the doctor because bad medicine is back. That's the Appleton Oak. This is the answer. I'm Mason Quinn. Guys, tonight we got something a little extra special for you. Tonight is the long awaited Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter round table discussion by Bad Medicine. <laughs> Want to make amazing. sure you can see it. That's all. Oh, you gotta always make sure we can so, see it. So I think the general consensus was, guys, that these movies were way too impactful, way too powerful, with way too much stuff going on, and way too many super fans for us not to have some kind of wrap-up discussion. Yeah, so our basic format for our reaction videos is we watch the TV shows and the movies, and as you guys have seen, after each one, we give it our reaction and our one to five mm -hmm. on the answer scale. As, uh, as, as Quinn had said, there's just so much depth to these movies, and, <laughs> and there's eight of them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, and we also did, uh, as you guys saw, the reunion. Yeah. So yeah. nine videos there. Uh, we will do. We are going to do the Fantastic Beast mm -hmm. movies. I know there's been some comments back about they're a little sketchy. Some yeah. people say they're good, but in any regard, these first eight movies um, were were really phenomenal, um, and we really felt like it was doing a disservice to the series to leave it with just the post video wrap ups. And on top of that, we did get so many requests mm -hmm. from people on Patreon and YouTube to do a final round table with a video, just talking about what we thought about the movies. Yep. And uh, so that's where we're at. Um, we wanted to kind of, you know, break this down and have some sort of structure have to it. Have a little it. fun with it. Have some structure to it. So kind of, cards. this is kind of how we're going to do Legal this. Legal pad. It's like Tony <laughs> this is, Kornheiser yeah. over here. <laughs> this is kind of how we're going to do this for you guys. And a lot of it is requests and suggestions from everybody on Patreon and YouTube. So for those of you who chimed in talking about what you'd like to see in our round table video, um, thank you very much. So, People actually asked for some bios. They want to yeah. know a little bit about us. Um, the weird thing about this franchise is it kind of feels like the people watching aren't just people watching YouTube and Patreon videos. We've kind of become like this <laughs> mini family. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I honestly mean that. And it feels like with the people commenting, like I'm not trying to be overly dramatic, but it feels like we're kind of like all part of this like Potter family, yeah. which I would have never in a million years so thought I would different mention that. I would have thought he'd be wearing a tie. Right. Nine and so we're gonna do. We're gonna break it down generally like this. We're gonna go over a little bit about ourselves. We're gonna talk about our overall perception of the films and the books before we started watching, so you guys can get an idea of kind of what we thought about Harry Potter before starting any of this. Um, we're gonna give like a real high level overview of how we felt about the whole series as a whole. Um, we're gonna go in and break down how we felt about each movie and how each movie you know, tied into the next and the overall development of the series from film to film. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about character development, mm -hmm. how we saw the characters grow and develop addition of new characters and their impact on the overall story. Um, probably gonna be my favorite part is talk about all the great lessons that these series taught us. The one thing going into these series that I had no idea would impact me as much as it did is the amount of invaluable lessons that Harry Potter teaches um, we are going to talk about some of the deleted scenes yep. uh, that was a big one so yeah, we're going to watch a couple of the deleted scenes from deathly hollows part one and two um, full disclosure i have watched i think every youtube video <laughs> on fan theories deleted scenes um a uh, shout out to Movie Flame, who did some great videos on the differences between the books and the movies. So I watched every single one of those. I have gone back and watched every movie again. Um, 
there was not enough time for me to do the audio books. Um, I went on iTunes. Um, I did go on uh, there was Audible. Audio, Audible. Uh, Audible. Um, some of them were eight hours. I think a few of them got up to like 25, 26 <laughs> hours. Yeah. So there wasn't enough time to do that. But um, I have seen some of the yeah. these videos. These guys have yeah, not. We seen have the not. We songs. have apparently we have self control answer, and we can wait until they're on. <laughs> I the didn't know there was going to be the big request to watch <laughs> deleted scenes. So it's, I, look, yeah, I, we do it on, for the fans. On Mr. My, selfish over there. On my mother, I did not sneak and watch any of the movies ahead of time before <laughs> Deathly Hollows Part Two. <laughs> But as soon as I finished Deathly Hollows Part 2, I was all over everything. Um, Way to go, gonna, Harry We're going to talk about some of our favorite quotes, mm -hmm. uh, a fun part, some of our favorite fan theories. Yeah, those are big. Then kind of an overall wrap-up um, of everything. So that's kind of the structure of how this is going to get broken down. So um, as far as bios, I don't know if you gentlemen want to kick things off. or if. Well, uh, I mean, like we look at, like basically, you know, from a small town, you know, children, not really that big. But like when the first one came out, I was... It was 2001, between sophomore and junior year. I, 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 like we all thought to begin with, I thought, you know, this was a kid's movie, so I wasn't going to watch it. I didn't, I didn't read any of the books because those would have came out actually right around the same. I would have been the same age as Harry when the books came out because I believe it came out in 96. Oh, correct you, me if I'm you wrong. You blew your opportunity. So, yeah, I could have actually wow. grown with it. But here's the thing is my sister-in-law is a year uh, uh a year older than me, can't think of that. And she grew up with the books and she loved them and loved the movies. And like, when I was talking to her about it, she's like, oh yeah, you'll like it. And then it's like, and, I, and we'll get to it later, but I asked her if Dobby was coming back. Then I asked my wife and they're both like, yeah, but then they didn't tell me the dark secret that would happen afterwards, which thank you for the support to all the fans that saw the tear in my eye. But, um, but yeah, like, I, you know, I was a football player. I played video games. I dabbled in wrestling then later on in life. So yeah, this went to pique my interest. Uh, so for me, you know, it was just a dumb jock and then just, you know, and when, when, didn't care to read unless it was something I was really interested in. So that I can definitely say, and I unapologetic about it. The last <laughs> book I read cover to cover was about wrestling. So that, you know, and that was for a paper in high school. So that's how long that was. But yeah, so yeah, I would have never thought to watch this, but you know, I'm glad I watched it later in life. It helped me actually appreciate it more. And so, did you have like a couple of movies that you were like really like into me, growing I was, up? I was like always a slapstick or? comedy guy. Yeah. I did like my nice occasional dramas. Like I, you know, I love like the, Casablanca is one of my favorites. And then A Time to Kill, you know. So it, like, if Shawshank Redemption were on the same page as that, Forrest Gump. I mean, who didn't live without that? But then on the other hand, I love my Dumb and Dumber. I love The Mask. You know, they had that big Jim Carrey kick. Then into the Will Ferrells and the Adam Sandlers and all those yeah. movies. So, it's totally different genre. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. and this as well. So like, and then you know, with video games, I played comic book movies. I mean, I I know I knew I had friends that had the Lord of the Rings games, and a few. I think there were some Harry Potter games. I don't know if they're well received or not. Mm -hmm. But then I played Spider Man. I played Madden. You know, basketball. I played the sports games, and then the occasional you know third person game because I was horrible at for Goldeneye. That game. Uh, like, you that, and me both, man. Just, first person shooters. I don't know about you, Oak. I remember when everybody was on those in high school and it was the big, or in college and it was the big deal. I couldn't play them to save no, my life. No, no. One, one sleepover ruined Brutal. it for me. But uh, how about how about yourself then, Quinn? Yeah. So I mean, kind of like everybody else here on the uh, on the panel here, I've, I got my note cards here because I wanted to be cards. I wanted to be a pro and I wanted to be able to throw them at the camera when I'm done. You know, I've seen that Just before. But but no, I mean out. honestly, guys, you know, so I was in uh, college when the Harry Potter movies started coming out, and I remember a lot of people I knew. I had some roommates that were really into them. Uh, shout out to Andrea; she was a huge fan of them, and uh, tried to get me into it, but. I, you know, was playing football, was playing rugby and stuff in college and going to school. So there's only so much time in the day, you know, so kind of missed out on it. But I was always a big Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, really loved my sword and sorcery uh, movies. Obviously, Conan the Barbarian was huge for me, very influential as a kid growing up was Conan. Uh, but then some of the other ones, like your Excalibur and your King Arthur, Ro even Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves, I really loved. I remember oh, yeah. I, stayed, I, I pretended to be sick one day to stay home from school so I could watch the VHS copy of Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves, because I wanted it to see it that epic. bad. Yeah, but 
you know, I mean, they always have to burn down the village at the beginning. I know. It's just uh, every time. <laughs> but no, and then like as far as video games, you know, like everybody else, I it was kind of weird. I was really into Nintendo, obviously, because of my oh. age. And then, you know, worked my way up through those. But I kind of stopped at like the original PlayStation. That was kind of where I peaked with like Metal Gear Solid, a couple of the wrestling games. Uh, Medieval, I thought was awesome. Yeah, and that that, that's kind of where I stopped. And I kind of... Yeah, I kind of stopped with the video games until I discovered Baldur's Gate in 1997. Now, a few of you guys are going to know about that. I still play it to this day, and it's probably the video game that I absolutely play the most. So big shout-out to everybody at Black Isle that made uh, Baldur's Gate. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, for hobbies, just to get a little into it, uh, love motorcycles. Uh been doing that for about five years completely changed my life the way i look at things obviously all power sports grown up in wisconsin yeah. we, we kind of do a little bit of that but uh yeah you know motorcycles camping sometimes i combine them do a little moto camping uh a lot of fun and my food i hate the most is papa john's pizza oh, Jesus and check God. out our vi videos on pizza for that don't get me started <laughs> Um, oh yeah, God. and, and the, the reason for these bios, and it, it might sound like a weird way to start off a Harry Potter reaction, but we had some some great comments, and I think the importance of the bios and having you guys know a little bit more about us is because of the fact that this movie created like this Harry Potter family. This isn't mm -hmm. something that we would have done for a, another movie series. Well, tell us more about yourself, and we want to, yeah, uh, like you know, understand, we want to understand why you like <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> and I think I think it's important to understand this because, look, I'm just going to come right out and say it. And it looks the the fact is is that like the Harry Potter, the wizards, and the sorcerers. I'm not going to say it was like nerd stuff, but it's like that like area of sci-fi right yeah. yeah don't back him no and i'm just no but i'm just i'm just <laughs> yep. being i'm just no, being honest perceived you know i'm sure. just being honest that's yeah. the perception and look even sci-fi like some you can classify sci-fi as being like nerdy but even like even like okay you have star wars you have harry potter you have star trek now the star wars people don't think they're nerdy <laughs> but some of the star wars people think the star trek people <laughs> are nerdy right mm -hmm. and yeah. so there's all oh, yeah. these different like areas of sci-fi and so i think part of understanding where we come from is like okay did you think harry potter was nerdy did you think people watching harry potter were nerds because you're the jocks and like well, we don't watch harry potter and i think that's the important of some of these yeah. bios i also think people genuinely have followed us along for eight <laughs> movies in yeah. a reunion and want to know a little bit about yeah. us so um i grew up in a, a small town little shoot about ten thousand people it was just a small um, town boy i was just a small town boy um, in a lonely not world. anywhere near south detroit um <clears throat> but you know, was into was into sports and stuff like that. Was you know into action movies. You know, my 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 stepdad. I grew up with my mom and my stepdad. My dad and my stepmom lived 20 minutes away, um, but my stepdad liked his action movies. You know, Stallone and Schwarzenegger and stuff like that. Um, so I grew up really into sports. Um, the movies kind of reflected a little bit of my life and a lot of people's lives. And like some of the friends that I had when I was younger, we did split and kind of go our separate ways when high school came around because I was very much into sports. Um, one of my best, I would say my best friend growing up, Kyle Nelson, got really into music and band. Kid taught himself to play the guitar, basically taught himself to play the, the piano, but it wasn't, it wasn't sports and stuff. You know, another one of my friends got really into like reading and sci-fi and fantasy and stuff. And, and that's a very common thing. And, and we're seeing it in other movies and TV shows. So I got kind of into sports. Um, I was an, I, I guess I could, I would, like an unpopular jock mm. is what I was. And the reason why I say an unpopular jock in the time that I grew up, in the town I grew up in, all the popular kids drank. Everybody. Fridays and Saturdays, you went to parties and you sat in people's basements or out by campfires and you drank. My father was my football coach. Um, I had no interest in getting booted off of sports. Uh, drinking wasn't something that was... Um, something that I wanted to get into. So while I was popular because I was a good athlete, I never got invited to parties. I think part of that was because all the kids knew my dad was a teacher and a coach. And yeah. they're like, oh. you're going to invite the teachers. <laughs> you can't my dad be telling was, Oak. My dad gonna... was a public school teacher. And I think if I ever it's got in narc. trouble, it was like everybody was going to get in trouble. So I had a weird time in high school mm. in that. that again, is interesting. I was popular because I was a, a good athlete. But I don't, I got to be honest, I don't think I was ever invited to a party in high school. Um, 
and be, because of like that weird dynamic, I was friends with everybody in high school. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I never got to that point where like, oh, I'm a jock now. So my friends when I was younger that are in a band and this and that, like, I'm not going to be cool with them anymore. I was really friends with everybody in high school because I did have that unique experience or lots of friends from sports, but Hey, it's Saturday night. Nobody's yep. calling me. Um, I ended up doing like the dry dance club thing. So I would go out to the local dance clubs, shout out to Brooklyn's and vibes um, oh for my making my childhood. But that's how you're going to say park central. Well, park central was Brooklyn's at park oh, central okay. was a bunch in Brooklyn's, but that it was weird because it was like the job, the, 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 the kids who were popular, they thought like going to dance clubs were like for losers. It was weird, but like the popular kids at the dance clubs, it was this weird dynamic. I would date, you know, girls from other schools and you know, you know how it is with small towns where like everybody dates everybody. And that was crazy that I would date girls from Outside, other schools, yeah. you know, and I did, no. but you know, full disclosure, you know, my junior and senior year in high school, I did pretty good with girls. And, oh, where'd you meet this girl? Like, I don't know. I left the hometown, you know, but <laughs> so you and, wandered out the vicinity. You know, part of the reason why I go through all that is because like I said, there's, we, we got called meatheads and bullies on one of our videos, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, you, you can't like take every comment to heart, but I understand like the way that we look like we are, you know, we all lift because we enjoy it. But, um, you know, I was never that way. So, I always just kind of got along with everybody. Yeah. And as, as you guys know, one of my things as a, a bodybuilder, and I will put this out there um, for the people who are fellow haters of bullies, one of the nice things about being five foot ten and 280 pounds and bigger than most everybody is there's a, there's a beautiful dynamic about being able to bully the bullies. And I know... <laughs> deal with the assholes so i don't tolerate bullying at all and when you get somebody who is a bully um uh, there's always somebody bigger and uh i've seen it that's, firsthand that's, yeah. that's usually me and i i don't well, deal with bullies and so when i encounter situations i also had a father who was very confrontational in a good way when he saw stuff when my dad saw stuff that was bad he stepped in and said stuff and so you combine my upbringing with that with the fact that i was bigger than 99 percent of the bullies um i um you know, I, I always did my part because I felt like that's what my dad would do. Um, after high school, um, still, I guess, pretty popular. But I always, I've always had a very diverse group of friends. Um, I have UW Fox Valley. I have. Uh, I'm, I'm. I was a competitive bodybuilder for 17 years. Uh, Two-time Mr. Wisconsin, NPC Mr. Wisconsin. Um, and they you know, it goes out to everybody. I got. Uh, Can't I got, just gloss I got over that. I got stereotyped <laughs> as being a meathead a lot. Oh and, how? And look, there are. Look, I will admit, and for all of you following you know th there is a reason a lot of stereotype exists and i know bodybuilders who really they they push the gas pedal on the meathead stereotype so i'm not um i'm not unaware of where stereotypes come from it just sucks when you try to be articulate and nice and polite but you're also good at lifting weights and people just think you're like this narcissistic asshole because you lift weights the only reason um, i thought you're a meathead is you always the, get a steak the most fun <laughs> the most fun story and quinn you know this guy i had a fellow meathead tell me <laughs> dude flex wheeler flex wheeler a very one of the greatest bodybuilders <laughs> of all time this is a funny story. I love this story. Flex Wheeler, bro, Flex Wheeler got to negative 3% body fat for the Olympia. This was in 1999. And I, I couldn't I couldn't wrap my I couldn't wrap my head around it. I'm like, what you you understand? I'm not gonna say his name, but like you you understand like that's that's, that's impossible. You get to see, he's like, look, bro, I'm just telling you what I read. You what he I was heard. shredded, bro, it was negative three percent body fat. So I get where the meathead comes from. And again, I'm just, I, the reason I'm going through this is just I just want to convey to yeah, you guys, like, skull. I understand sometimes what people think when they see bodybuilders, and I just want you to know that we're not all like that. I'm certainly not like that, but I understand where perception that I may be a bully or something comes from. Um, but like I said, I have lots of groups of, of, of different types of friends, and uh, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think, you know, even with having a diverse group of friends, that I didn't think Harry Potter was a little nerdy. Um, that being said, I also thought Lord of the Rings was nerdy, and my two older brothers, who were both, you know, cooler guys, they loved it, you know? We played Dungeons and Dragons when we were younger, and my brothers always, like, Oh, the thrill of rolling a natural my, 18. My brothers, oh. the three six-sided dice oh, trying boy. to roll you the 18. Oh, boy, you an unnatural? Uh, let's quick, let's go through the rules. Is there a clip? <laughs> no, but, um, oh. but in any regard, I always thought, like, that sort, like, I liked old historical, like, 
Braveheart and Gladiator, like those types of movies that were like your battle type movies, I liked. But anything that got into like sci-fi and dragons and wizards and stuff, I wasn't into. Um, you know, we you think lo- part of that maybe is because the special effects weren't there yet. No, and I just it thought cheesy. it was. I just yeah. thought it was kind of kind of nerdy, I guess. Well, you, you, watch, know? you watch the first Terminator. Um, it's not like those special effects were in all. Yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were amazing hey, for the time. Alien still holds you up, up, though. You know that what? Is true. You bring up still. a good point. Yeah. I was choosy about which sort of sci-fi. I suppose sci-fi versus believe. fantasy is kind of a different to believe. thing. Yeah. Mm. But I, I guess that's, that's kind of like a really like basic overview of 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 who, you know, of, of who we are and what we do. Um, y- you know, it's funny that you bring up. Uh, Andrew brings up Terminator. Um, I work for Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, which is a weird thing to <laughs> say. Greg. I, I work. <laughs> no, and I just say I say it because it's a, it's like a weird thing, and like I don't think we've brought it up. I, uh, I uh, social media director, and I work in digital marketing for the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I, I work for him. I hope you're so watching. That's it. Well, yeah, he's uh, not even a shirt, folks. Yeah. I haven't even gotten a shirt yet. Um, but anyways, how's the butter beer, fellas? Uh, yes, uh, butter beer. Uh, Andrew mm. whipped up some butter beer. These are refills for us, by the yes. way. Yes, we um, wanted to try and we, save them. We, we slammed the first one. It's very good. There's in, there's recipes online. Recipes online for okay. butter beer. It's amazing. There, these are kid friendly. There's also mm-hmm. adult friendly. So you can go nuts. Yeah, adult, yeah. adult, <laughs> well, adult, adult kid friendly. Fr- adult friendly. I don't know if they're yeah. adult friendly, but oh, you, you know, know what we, we mean. You know it. But in any regard, um, again, I know that's a, a lot to talk about just about us before even getting into the round table. But it was it was requested to, mm-hmm. to let um, to let you guys know us a little bit better. And again, I would like to emphasize that this is not normally something we would do, and I would have never imagined this, but it really oh, has yeah. become. I mean, we're posting these videos. I would have thought it was cool if we got like 50 comments on yeah. these Potter videos. We're getting like a thousand, yeah, 1,500 guys, comments. It's been awesome. And it's not just comments like, hey, we like this movie. Look, some people are really, and, and I want to say this, and we'll touch again. Uh, some people are really diving into what these movies meant to us and sharing some some very personal details. And in, in no way, shape, or form for two seconds do we think any of this is an overshare. We think it's really awesome that some of you guys have opened up and talked to us about how the movies have impacted your life, help you through rough times. We've had a handful of people talk to us about us doing these reactions have brought them joy, which, you know, the three of us read a comment earlier that got us all choked up and it was, you know, not a manly man moment, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But no. it's been really awesome. Um, that some of you guys have been able to open up with us and, and be really honest about um, the impact that the movies have had. And again, not something just, that I thought we would say. The impact that us watching we, them have had yeah. because of the fact like you feel like you got to watch movies with some friends for the yeah. first time. Because we're here to entertain. Um, we're here to educate us on Harry Potter, which you guys have also helped with, w- us with. But we're also here to have fun with you and this and engage with you watching this stuff. Mm-hmm. And we're glad that we're just here to be part of the entertainment for you. So to so to roll into kind of our so next. So here's the first topic. So to roll into <laughs> our first topic, our overall perception of the films and books prior to watching. Yeah. I touched on that a little bit. I'll just kind of roll into that after yeah. my bio. I kind of felt like before watching all this, it was nerdy kid stuff, if I'm just going to throw it out. And I, I don't mean nerdy like trying to be a bully. I just thought like it wasn't my thing, right? Wizards. Um, expect to Patrono, you know, like that sort of stuff. Um, I worked at Best Buy in college um, from 2003 to 2007. Sold a lot um, of DVDs. And a little after college. And so there was previews. You know, we always had the preview reels on the TVs oh, yeah. and stuff. So there's a lot of Harry Potter preview reels. Always people talking about Potter with the preview reels. When the first few came out on DVD, of course, we had the DVDs and stuff there, like that. Were there lines and stuff, or was there any, um, would they sell out y- quick? You know, we didn't, I don't think that we ever really had lines for the DVDs. Um, the local Barnes & Noble did have lines for, for the when, the, when the book releases yeah, okay. were, but I don't, I don't believe there was ever lines at Best Buy for DVDs. But, I mean, that was kind of my thing, is I thought they were, I, I thought, they were kids movies first off first yeah. off i thought it was like wizard stuff and it was kids movies so um i'm 42 so you know early 2000s you know i'm you know 21 or early 20s so i definitely thought this wasn't anything that i was going to be into um yep. so not only was it a genre that i was not really into but also i thought they were kids movies so that was my overall early yeah. perception of harry potter 
Well, like, like I touched on it too. Um, I was actually going to look up quick the books because I was going to ask you how old you would have been in '96 if it would have been possible, you know, to read the books. And yeah, I mean, I was yeah, I was 17, just getting because I mean, because that was the thing too is that's where it hooked a lot of people. But it, you're out of that age range, maybe that might have stopped you from yeah, because it was it. such a phenomenon with the books. Because I you mean, know? we were. Like I was, some of the few things you remember is like the Today Show when yes, people yep. waiting in line for all these books yep, and everything 100%. like that. I was you know sixteen, seventeen, and ninety six. I graduated high school in ninety eight. There's zero percent chance. I, look, I was like Andrew. I didn't like. I was more of a movie, a visual type person. The only books I was reading was school books I had to read and a few like motivational like biographies and stuff like that here and there. Some old World War Two books. Um, but there's a zero percent chance I'll be straightforward yeah. well, that at sixteen that I would have gone and ass. bought, you know, the Potter yeah. books when and they came out. It it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been my thing. Yeah, because yeah, because I mean, I guess I'm the only one that have been young enough, and if maybe if Diamond Dave was been here, in that age we could have been in that age group. Because yeah. if we had been eleven, I mean, that's right his first year, right? Or what? Or was he a little bit younger in the oh, first I one? Think... I thought he was nine. Nine or ten? What was he? Uh, this is Maybe stuff was, we should know. This, yeah. like it's been this a, is horrible. It's been a, it's been it's a horrible for me. No. I want to say I thought he was eleven when we did the wrap up because I, I I thought I remember that. But you know, while you're looking that up, I'll just give her a quick minute of what I thought about it when they came out. Obviously, like everybody, I knew they were incredibly popular. I think for me, like I touched on earlier, were some of my favorite movies. I was just so much more into swords and sorcery, and I always thought my fantasy had to have. Uh, wizards, obviously, but I wanted knights, barbarians. I wanted uh, I wanted dragons. I wanted goblins. I wanted all the all the Dungeons and Dragons monsters. I thought that's what you needed to have fantasy, right? So, and I was just coming off Lord of the Rings because that Ooh. was I I want to say I have to check the years, but that I was, was right in college five, when it? those were coming out because I remember I told the story about the girl that I took to the two towers in college on a date that went well for me not, <laughs> but but no so that's what she I was so into and, never came back. and I was like man there's nothing that's gonna top Lord of the Rings like you know again I mentioned I was doing a couple of different sports I was trying to finish up college and worrying about getting a job so it just it's just one of those things that kind of fell off to the side and I, I had people telling me you know how great it was but again just not something I thought I'd be into and you know and I'm a fantasy guy as far as reading goes you know I read the Lord of the Rings uh and, and the Hobbit you know when I was younger and read a couple of Dragonlance books which were again kind of D&D based in that in that realm Forgotten Realms whatever you want to call it for all my fellow guys out there but yeah so didn't think i would i would find an interest in it, and this has been a, a great surprise i mean uh the harry potters came out in 97 the first one came out then yeah. 98 99 2000 2003 2005 and 2000 yeah, so, and so the they books. were because so, like yeah, yeah so the last they, book got like done yeah. what shortly before they started filming i thought they were waiting on it because yes we so watched the reunion with alan rickman who was who was uh off to the side getting yeah. some notes so yep. they're like why are you playing that way i'll tell you later yeah so yeah so and again like i said i was coming off the whole lord of the rings high when all that was going on i just like gandalf is a wizard and there is no other that's what i was thinking you <laughs> that's know that's it um, you know, the next thing that we wanted to jump into was just a really high-level um, overview, I guess you could say, <laughs> review of the series as a whole. Um, and we're going to get into breaking down movie by movie, but the series as a whole. I felt, um, and this is like in retrospect, not as mm -hmm. we were going, yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go movie by movie, but in, in retrospect, this series as a whole... Um, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. I think it's an absolute one-of-a-kind story. I think it's a one-of-a-kind journey because of the fact that you, the, the, the characters started at this age where they can go through and they're growing and learning and it's this coming of age story and they were shooting the movies and 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 I'm t I'm going to talk about the movies and, and not the books because look the books can you can start and read at any time yeah but when the movies came out it must have been such an incredible experience this coming of age story people got to grow with Potter parents who had kids that age got to grow with Potter of course you know now I find out like you know it's for everybody um so really anybody that got to watch the movies as they were happening but it 
it was you know the, the the actors were they were going through all the same stuff yeah. they were growing and they were getting older and it's this very unique thing look we have lots of movies that have multiple sequels and, and multiple you know like star wars for yeah, example you have this stretch and you have all yeah. these sequels none of them are a coming of age story with you know eight good chapters like harry potter mm -hmm. I think the lessons in this movie are arguably, as a whole, the 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 most um, they have the most substance of any movies I think I've ever seen. Yeah. There's a lot of movies that'll teach like one or two good lessons or have like this this <clears throat> theme around it, um, and we see a, a lot of that in in Hollywood. But this movie, it was just one after the next after the next. I thought they did such a phenomenal job of telling a story, taking us on a journey teaching us lessons so much about right and wrong entertaining us along the way with you know the comedy of the things that we all yeah. go through and yep. the awkwardness of, of being a teenager and looking for love and all that it was interesting um, with the lessons i and excuse me if i jump in here but it was interesting with the lessons i thought how they didn't have to beat you over the head with it to get the point across in the movies like they were in there and they were relatively subtle and but you still picked up on them but it wasn't like they had to be jammed down your throat well to, what to it was is there. you you strip away all the magic all the wizardry and it's just a kid growing up going to an awkward school having awkward moments throughs yes he has to save the world fight, every once in a while for his life fight yeah. for his life every yeah. year but that could also be a metaphor that yes yeah, some kids yeah. do go through that every school year where they do kind of have to fight for their place you know in school and with everything so i think Really, it's a great story, even if you strip away all the bands yeah. in Widget Show. Yeah. I mean, it might be only a 30-minute movie, but... No, and yeah, Andrew, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, because I think in one of the movies, in a couple of the movies I had re mentioned, like, this is like Rocky, just with wizards. Yep. And I, I think Andrew hits the nail on the head with that, that you could take away the wizards or whatever. Let's say Harry Potter's dad was, you know the greatest, you know, let's say his dad was Wayne Gretzky, right? Mm. And he's the chosen one and he has to go to this school and everybody thinks Play he's great. Hockey, and you have yeah. the mean yeah. one and he has to he has to learn hockey and, you know, the ups and downs of, of friendship and getting in trouble. And of course, you know, hockey's not a saving the world type situation, but you could have told one a similar, a time. you could have told a similar sports story or whatever. But at the end of the day, Andrew's so correct in that when you take away the Wizards and everything else, it's still such an amazing story. Um, I just, yeah. I just think that it's it's unlike anything I've ever seen, and I don't mean to foreshadow um, because maybe before this happened, there was something that people may have compared to this. But I tried to go back and think of other stories that are similar to this, where the characters are aging and the storylines are maturing, and just the the depth of the lessons. And I can't think. I can't really think of anything else. I yeah, mean, I mean, just off the top of my head, the, the closest thing you could think of would maybe be the prequels with the Star Wars. The you know the Ewan McGregor ones where Anakin's a kid, but then all of a sudden he's Hayden Christensen, and, and it's that's, not and really... That's, and that's the know. interesting thing, and I'm glad you brought that up because we have seen movies where they bring out prequels, and it's interesting to learn backstories. Backstories are cool, right? Yeah, like yeah, Marvel origins. does origin stories. Yep. As far as I'm concerned... And look, maybe in the future it'll be different with digital enhancement. You know, we're seeing some crazy things with the new season of Stranger Things where they're they're doing some digital to make kids look younger. Even prequels and and and, and, and origin stories, it's not the same actors. It's not the same. Yep. The storyline was growing. You were watching these kids grow up. They were growing up in Hogwarts, but they were growing up in real life. Yeah. And, you know, you think about movies that have a bunch of sequels. Of course, there's a million Marvel movies. They're all as adults. They're already their superheroes. They did some backstories for us. It's cool. You're not growing with them. Yeah. Star Wars, you're not really growing with them. You know, you had the, the, the little kid in Phantom yep. Menace. Then you had Kraid. You're not, you're not, you're not growing with them. Yeah. Um, it was here's him at 10 and here's yeah. him at, you know, 16. It's, yeah, you're not growing with yeah. them. And I don't know that there is another. The, the closest thing that I've been able to find is the TV show The Wonder Years. Mm. So the Wonder Years came out in the 80s with Fred Savage, and I forget, um, of course, um, <clears throat> Winnie Cooper, Danica McKellar. McKellar. Uh, and the Wonder Years started when they were in about sixth grade and followed them through high school. So I think yeah. it was seven, I want to say six or seven seasons. If you haven't watched, if you're a Harry Potter fan and haven't watched the Wonder Years, it's it's a lot of great lessons. It's it's a, somebody narrating their childhood. It's based in the '60s and all the things that are going on socially and all the same awkwardness Girl, of love. Joe it feel, it feels like one big themes. long goblet of fire. 
Um, but that was the closest thing that I could think yeah. of watching somebody growing up. Um, and I was, um, you know, I was a few years younger than, than where they were at in the wonder years. But by the time I was in high school, they were already running reruns. So it was very, the wonder years was very relatable to me, you know, um, I, you know, some, I think somebody brought up, you know, they grew with Saved by the Bell. Yeah, <laughs> um, okay. And every episode yeah, of Saved, time out. you know, Time Out. And, of course, yeah. Saved by the Bell started when they were in grade school, went through high school and college. It was very much a show to teach lessons. Each yeah. each episode had a lesson. But, look. At I, the end I, of the day. I love, look, I, uh, I, love, um, I, I love everybody from Saved by the Bell. I got to meet and interview A.C. Slater, Mario Lopez a few years back. That was great for me. But I'm not going to pretend for two seconds that Saved by the Bell had the depth or you can even compare it <laughs> yeah. to Harry Potter because you can't. And that's coming from oh, a big yeah. Saved by the Bell fan. Yeah, I mean, and I'd, and I'd agree with you, Oak, as, as far as like my just quick 10,000-foot view of the series is that Never been done before, probably won't ever be done again. Um, we got to see in the 20th anniversary, uh, they talked about, you know, yeah. the, the, the big three, you know, Daniel Radcliffe and, and company, about how they grew up in, in making this movie and having the opportunity to work with all the top-level A-list actors yeah. that they got to work with. That they did. And, you know, it's like, uh, I forget which actor it was, maybe you guys remember, but it was almost hard for them to like who were they and who was oh, the character they I played? I believe Rupert. Yeah, that might have been Ron said yeah, that. Rupert been, Grint said that yeah, he was. He, uh, I am Ron Weasley. Yeah, yeah. he is yeah. Ron Weasley because at your. That's who you are from such a young age, from the time you're 11 to, I don't know, let's say they were in their 20s, I think, by the time they, they finished it up. And that's well, all they, you've they been. They did it over the course of nine years. Yeah. I think oh, Daniel. One to, oh, yeah. To 10. Yeah. So that's what I found as the most impactful thing and why I don't think we'll, we'll ever see something like that again. I mean, one, try to keep that many actors together for that many movies. That's, that's a not fair. easy to well, do. Well, was a huge commitment as Daniel, yeah. which I love. Daniel was his name already at... Oh, he's whatever, British. They're uh, professional. It's single digits. Yeah. Well, I'm Daniel. No, you're not Danny. Not yeah. Dan. But yeah. the fact that, like, remember, he almost didn't get it because his parents didn't want to move to L.A. because because yeah. they knew it was going to be a huge commitment. Yeah. I mean, you look at it. I mean, you don't know if the first one's going to catch or not, but you're assuming it's going to. So uh, it's like, all right, well, guess what? That's uh, it's going to be eight movies. Well, eight. 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 Yeah, and that's why you know Emma. You look at her; she almost dropped. Almost yeah. left. I mean, that yeah. was and watching the reunion story. And uh, again, uh, you know, I held off on watching a bunch of these Potter movies. And even in all the YouTube videos I watched, reaction or not, rea <clears throat> I watched other people's reactions. Um, but watching um, fan theories and and deleted scenes and all sorts of stuff. That was one thing <laughs> that didn't really come up in the type of videos I was watching. Oh. So I had no idea. I was really yeah. surprised when we watched the reunion that she almost left and it's like you think at that age it's like oh my god like this is a gold mine why would you leave and so that speaks to how much pressure she yeah, would have been under the other th the, the other thing that i think um <clears throat> i did read somewhere um that somebody brought up she did not talk about in the reaction video but somebody brought up being typecast <laughs> If you oh, play one role yeah. for too long and that had she gone through, you know, if she did one and two when she was young or even three when she was young and then stepped away from Potter, she, she could grow and, as an yeah. actor. If she stayed with them for too long, she would always be, you know, Hermione Granger. Um, and we have seen that with some other actors. I, you know, I just brought up Saved by the Bell and um, the Wonder Years. I mean, now part of it could be they weren't great actors, but those actors had very difficult time finding work yeah. when those shows were done. And we see that. Um, you know, some of the characters on Seinfeld, uh, you know, one of my favorite shows of all mm -hmm. time. Look, when when that show was done, you're George Costanza. Yeah, yeah. You're, and that's how it's going to be. You're George yeah. Costanza. You're yep. not anybody else. And I think things not go. that's what somebody had brought up Elaine with, was at, with Emma Watson mm -hmm. is that if she sticks with this too long, now she's been able to go on and have a great career, yeah. a very dynamic mm -hmm. actor. Um, but I will say in the reunion, and that's that's well, what you people can, discuss. In the reunion, she that, talked though. about, she talked straight about the pressure in the reunion. Yeah. It was getting to be a lot. And I think, you know, if I recall correctly, she had said when she started to see the impact that this had on people. Yes, that was huge. That's like, yeah. okay, this is something I should keep going yeah. with. Um, and, you know, you well, mentioned that because I remember uh, if you kind of think about like Daniel Radcliffe, 
you know, he had to grow a beard. He had to take some pretty crazy roles yeah. to really distance himself from being Harry Potter. Well, I mean, he did some crazy stuff acting wise and, afterwards. And she touched on the fact, or it was, or maybe Daniel, where he was like, "Well, we, ha me and Rupert had each other. She was, you know, off pretty much by herself because like they had they had that camaraderie. Whereas because they're a couple of young boys here, she's a teenage female, and yeah. there, there was no one really else on the cast until Luna." <laughs> Luna came along that she actually had like a fellow like young actress that was going to be there you know as many as much as she as, all, yeah. as much as she was yep. yeah every, every other female that was that young was you know an extra unless you count uh, Ginny. Uh, yep. so you know I think as a, as a high level review of the 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 series I think we all agree that this was very much a one of a kind yeah. um, and you can very much understand why there's like a potter community somebody called it something um, but like a potter community this is a one, this is a one of a kind um series of books and and movies and i just uh, i thought it was so neat i'm so glad that i had this responsibility um yeah. to watch these movies as part of this channel because it opened you know opened up my eyes to this incredible world that i, I, I honestly i never would have yeah, and if even, even if the channel even never if you had convinced me just, and i had said this to these guys before even if somebody had convinced just just watch the first one just watch the, you know because sometimes with like tv shows you're like eh, i don't need to watch it somebody's yeah. like just watch one you'll love it you'll love it and then, and then you get hooked and you're like okay now i'm now i'm into it you know mm -hmm. I would have watched the first one and been like, man, eh, not my thing. And if somebody's like, but just just watch Wait. the second one. You gotta you gotta watch them all. I'd have watched the second one and been like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, you know? I, I gave it a this, fair this shot. This isn't for yeah. me. Yeah. I'm done. So the fact That's, that uh, again, it's I had over two for me. <laughs> I had a responsibility uh, to watch these movies. Um, was it was a great thing for me. So. Well, so yeah. So I was gonna say with us, we we keep thanking you guys for it, and it's like because we're genuine and we really mean it. Because we wouldn't have watched this otherwise. I I, no. I don't think I would have. No. I and, think it's look. I I so, will say one thing. I kind of I don't want to say I. I gave them decent reviews the first two, and I said, "Hey, I understand yeah, why they're popular." Yeah, they're for. But I kind of let's be honest. Scenes, I was like, Jesus. I, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, honestly, I was not that <laughs> impressed with movies. I, it just yeah. watching the first two reiterated what I thought twenty years ago. Ah, these are kids' movies. Yeah. These are kids' movies about whatever. So after I watched the first two, I'm like, "This is why I didn't watch them in the early 2000s." <laughs> and the fact that I had to keep going. Um, was was incredible but you guys on youtube and in patreon were so cool about it yeah look we all know the internet can be a harsh place and instead of coming out and being like Duh, this meathead doesn't appreciate yeah. potter and, this, sitting back there. and all the things I, you guys could have said everybody did the same thing all right yeah. we yeah. just wait i think part of it was because you knew we had the you knew, <laughs> you knew that we were gonna watch all yeah eight, you know commitment. had it been like yeah hey, maybe then maybe yeah. you could but you knew we were gonna watch all eight and just the the way people were online, and like I said, online can be such a nasty <laughs> place. Can't even and everybody was so cool. Like they yep. were just like sitting there, like, all right, yep. well let's just yep. just watch, just wait. I could then... visualize almost every one of them just sitting back with their arms crossed and a smug look, being like, like "Just you wait." Oak. Somebody, just I think it was wait. either it was either after Order of the Phoenix or the Half Blood Prince. Somebody had commented, and and I. I apologize, and regardless of whether I like a movie or not, being distracted by phones and other stuff, it's not f fair to our, our followers and our watchers. But I had to, I'm like, oh, God, Harry Potter, like two, two and a half hours. like, uh. And then he's like, by the time the fifth movie came in, Oak's like glued to the TV. And <laughs> Phone I goes off, he rifles and it across the studio. Was. I was like, D don't message me, I'm watching Potter. Don't message me, don't call, I'm watching Potter. Um, yeah. But no, so you guys were great. But on a real high level um, overview, series was awesome. Yeah, it's like um, a five answers, you know, for the whole series. Yeah, we all yeah. kind of gave it five out of five. Yeah, it was interesting that I, I built up my scores, and then when you when you watch the last one, and then you can look back and reflect. Um, you look at it. You look at the whole thing different. Yeah. Once well, the, why don't once we jump right into how each film? Feed. Yeah. So the feel. so the next we thing go. we're gonna yeah. do is you know break down kind of each movie. I can start off with this. So one thing that I did, um, that I that I had time to do, I made time to do. I went back and watched every movie again. Um, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> oh have. Oh my god! Yeah. No kidding. Look, I didn't have. I didn't have time to read the books. Um, and Kid and wasn't thank you for, for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for everybody who recommended the audiobooks, and I was gonna get into that. I think the, I think it's the Half Blood Prince. 
It's like the audiobook's like 26 hours. <laughs> I think Order of the Phoenix might be like the first one. I think I looked at like the first one is like eight hours mm. and then like 11. I'm like, okay. Then like 12 and like 20, 23 like, hours <laughs> listening and like 26 <laughs> hours. So I didn't have time to do the audiobooks. Um, I will absolutely go back and do the audiobooks. I, um, I don't know that I'm going to read the books, but I will go do the audiobooks. But I did want to make a point of going back and watching every movie yeah. again. And as far as the first movie, um, the Sorcerer's Stone, um, I will say that once you've watched them once and you go back and watch them again, or even once you've finished the series, I look at it very differently. Mm -hmm. um, when I watched the first one, I felt like this is a kid's movie and it's cheesy and it has some good lessons for kids. And once you you look at the big picture of everything, you realize this isn't a kid's movie. It's a movie about children in the beginning of their story it's like you know you brought up star wars when you watch the phantom menace and it's young anakin you don't think like oh this is a kid's movie blah yeah. blah blah because the main character is a kid you think like okay this is part of this epic story yeah. and they're telling us the story of when they were a child and that yep. was the biggest thing for me once i got to the end of the movies and I went back and watched it again. When I watched it the second time, I didn't feel like I was watching a kid's movie. I felt like here's this giant like journey that's yeah. going to be laid out in a front of me. A giant miniseries And almost. here's me watching yeah. the beginning. So um, even for as much as I appreciated the earlier movies once we got done watching them, when I went back and watched them again, I looked at it totally different because I know where their journey. Yeah, you know where you, it's you going. Know where oh, their yeah. journey, I yep. knew where their journey was going. It's like, okay, the beginning of the journey. And every little thing that happened, instead of rolling my own, oh, this is blah, blah, blah. Yep. It was fun for me because it was the beginning of the journey. And uh, I do have my notes on, um, on my phone. I was making notes, so I don't want you guys to think yeah, that. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's fine. While you're doing that, I'll just quick throw in my you know two cents as an as the movies were individually, you know, for me, again, it it can be a little bit tough when you're doing a reaction video to really absorb everything that's going on because, you know, you have to kind of be alert of so many things. But anyhow, um, you know, looking back on it, it was just such a great build in the stories and how the the stakes got ramped up in, in each movie and how everything got that much more serious and adult and we, and we saw the themes of them, you know, Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone, the Philosopher's as it's uh, Stone. as it's more properly called. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was a really good intro to it, and I, and I remember the first part of that movie had us all just cracking up, dying, laughing with with uh, Harry's uh, oh living under the yeah steps with living under the steps oh, and so his aunt and uncle yeah, and his and cousin uncle? they're just yeah. assholes. I mean, we Which were stayed true though. We were oh, laughing fine. pretty much that whole time. I don't know how much of that got uh, edited down yeah. for the reaction, but we were dying the whole time. At that point, I was pretty much hooked, and I was game on you know for the rest of the series. At that point, um, like you said, Oak, a little bit, I did have to kind of accept it as having some themes for kids but just because you know harry potter and you hear people talk about it being dark mm -hmm. and get in there in the comments or whatever you know that it's going to grow and i just thought they did a, a fantastic job with like especially those first three or four episodes because that's critical to build that if you yeah. mess that up boy you're in you're done. I mean, you know? it, it premiered in November of 01, um, $125 million budget. And according, it is, it grossed $1.01 .01 billion. With a B. <laughs> With a B. 1.1 billion was what 1. it did. 1.018 billion. Was that its first theater run or is that? I'm, wondering, I'm thinking it, it might be combined seeing how the other numbers went for the other three. But still, even if that is, it was still probably the high like 900 800 million because that's it made a lot of it made a lot was it made a lot of money but yeah, yeah it, it it obviously had the comedy and something like that but i always think of it, though too when they're saying it's darker you're like yeah right kids movie but at the same time i just thought of this now it's like well they're not gonna stay nine and ten uh, yeah, forever, forever. <laughs> yeah. this, this eight movie journey isn't over the course of one school year that'd be a hell of a school year yep. So I, I can see that, but that's how it would start, is it? Because that's how your life would be at that age. Yeah. But yeah, wow. like I said, it was really comedy driven. It seemed like in the first one. I mean, it got a little dark at the end, but 
of the first movie, it like kind of like towed the line. Yes. It wasn't full on there. It wasn't anywhere near it was going to become. But it still had a lot of good comedy that, like you said, the first 15 minutes were, oh, right, were like, just he's dying. living under the stairs. Yeah. The, the aunt and uncle know he can do magic, and they still treat him like garbage. Like, you know what? Any time he just zap, he got the snake to he's helped the Talking snake the escape. Snake. Talking to him, put his cousin in there. It's like... And yet they still treated him like garbage? Like, come on. Well, man. you got to remember, Harry didn't know he was a wizard at that time. Oh, he was yeah, just yeah, a kid yeah, living under true. the stairs. Yep. But um, Just a kid under the stairs. He was just a kid under the stairs. But uh, his, his aunt did in Petunia, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. They knew... They knew what was up yep. from the beginning. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was a tough part to watch with that first one. It's like the treatment of a child was was really bad, you know. And they and the apparently one, the books are are worse. Yeah, you know the apparently. thing that they did with the movie is they the they created kind of a comedy aspect to it, so you felt bad, but the Dursleys were easy to laugh at. Yeah. So what? I mean, they could have made that whole like living under the stairs like a lot darker than it was yeah. you know especially when they brought up the point and i forget if it was in the first or the second movie maybe in the second where oh we even let you move into dudley's second bedroom and it was like <laughs> yeah, wait, second. So, so he's had the second bedroom the whole time yeah. and you made harry live under the stairs so it was you know it was nasty but the first you know you guys bring up a good point the first movie a lot of good comedy introduction to the main characters you know we learn a little bit about the houses um uh, you know, or early on, what yeah. type of person is in Gryffindor and Slytherin? Uh, which, by the way, um, our our, uh, our partner in crime, Diamond Dave, texted us. He's like, "Don't forget to do the quiz." Oh yes, we so we'll do the quiz. Uh, we'll be taking that quiz here in a little bit for you guys. Find out which house that we should mm -hmm. we should be in. Um, but the first movie, I you know, looking back on it, I thought it was um, was a good start. Uh, a lot of um, you know, uh, a, a lot of comedy, but some tough moments, um, you know, with with the mirror. God, it starts with an A. I'm going to have a hard time with the mirror. So you guys are going to get on me for this one. But that mirror that kind of shows you, yeah. you know, what, what you want what life you to be. Yeah. Um, Andrew can be like our, uh, you know, on, on, on Joe Rogan, he's got the guy looking stuff up. Yeah. Andrew's hey, got, look that Andrew's up. Andrew's got the laptop. The uh, Andrew, pull up what the name of the the name of the mirror yeah. is, the, the Harry Potter mirror. Um but um, it was it was it was a it was a good it was yeah. a good movie and a good start to the world. You know, they, they had some fun scenes on the train with the toads and the yep. cards, um, Harry Potter ordering all the candy. So um, but I think I, I did think that's what, um, you know, kind of. The, the beginning of the story and the nature of it, I think that's what maybe led people to believe that, like, who hadn't read the books, that it was going to be all, like, kids' movies. Andrew, you bring up a really br good point that I hadn't thought about. It was like, yeah, if they're going to continue to use these movies, <laughs> like, same <laughs> actors, books, they, yeah. the kids are going to get older. They yeah. can't stay young. And I, like, it was almost like one of those, like so like obvious but you don't think you don't about think like, about it oh the these these are kids movies i'm not gonna watch this okay well in a couple of years they're gonna be teenagers so yeah, they can't they can't be little kids movies anymore so you know that the topic is gonna yeah. change which like bang my head on the on the uh on the table <laughs> yeah. type stuff but it was a good start to the movie it was it was serious enough to where you learned about the world of you know witchcraft and wizardry yeah. but light enough to where the kids who were that age and going um you know, um, you know, it was it wasn't too much to to take in. I mean, if yeah. you have the seriousness of even Goblet of Fire, or especially, you know, like um, you know, Order of the Phoenix, or you know, obviously it gets way darker yeah. in Half Blood Prince, and then the final oh. two. But I think you throw that at people too early, and it would have been like, whoa, coming yeah, in, yeah, uh, what are we doing here? A little bit hot. I yeah. thought these were were kids, but we also no. do have to remember that it did it did follow the books, and J.K. Oh. Rowling yeah. wrote the books to say, to the progress. It's the second one right, where they drop into all the skulls or whatever. And then yeah, inside. so let's yeah. let's talk about the the second yeah. one. Um, part November two. 07. Part or not 07. I'm sorry. November 02. So 879 million. So yeah, that came out in on a hundred million dollar budget. Yeah. So that came out in November of 02. Um, Chamber of Secrets for me got it. You know, it it did get a little bit dark. Um, I love the basilisk. Yeah, the basilisk. I mean, people were. Oh, turn you to stone. Were, I mean, it, it, it. You know, they kept it a kids movie, but I was, I was pretty, 
I was pretty shocked. Yeah, Lockhart was hilarious. When he gets knocked off by Ron. The print. That was one of my favorite parts in the whole the, series. The whole series. Yeah. But I, I think, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> when, I, when you look back, um, the Sorcerer's Stone introduces you to the world. And then the Chamber of Secrets was like this ease into, okay, there's going to be some serious parts yeah. as we go. Um, you know, when the cat died, I was like, did they? Yeah. Because that was the first, you know, I'm like, did, did they kill this guy's cat? Yeah. You know, and there was some interesting, um, it's it's a fan theory I'm not going to discuss later, but there was a fan theory that that was his wife turned into a okay. cat. <laughs> and so that's why he was so in love with the cat the whole time. Oh. Um, but I look at my my dogs. I have four of them. They're like family. Um, I, I can't say on TV that I love them as much as my fiance. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, you know, you're right though. That that was a really big jump, and that we started I mean, seeing uh, casualties. Killing, an, an, killing an animal, and, and people mm -hmm. will joke on online but like i've seen like look i can watch all kind of movies but if the dog dies i'm not watching oh, look it. at john wick uh, yeah right the whole know? movie's based around the dog in a car mm -hmm. um but so it, they they started to introduce us to um the serious nature of some of the yeah. things that were happening you had people getting killed you had this evil that was growing that they found out about the diary of tom riddle you know yep. you found out that you know moaning merlo like somebody died there like yeah okay that somebody, was heavy we some, saw her. i mean it's it's heavy and, and it's you know she's floating around and joking and stuff but it's heavy material that a kid died in the school yeah i mean that's 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 heavy material um and uh you know knowing that you know there's this 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 snake and look blood on the wall i mean blood on, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was blood on the walls a little bit a look it's one thing if somebody dies it's another thing blood on the wall you know yeah. everybody thinks you know they're, they're they're trying to figure out who the heir of slytherin is and yep. i know i was like it's harry it's <laughs> harry here's the, here's the plot twist and you guys watching it had to be like yeah, come this on this guy idiot <laughs> come on this guy it's, knows nothing this guy it's not going to be harry yep. but i thought part 2 was good it was a nice mm -hmm transitional it, film. it was kind of like the bridge i felt too was almost a bit of a bridge the same way that um i i again i didn't get a chance to rewatch them like you did but the way that i thought the um the fifth one no i'm sorry the, the way the sixth one kind of kicked off the deathly hollows yeah i felt that that was a bridge the same way the second one was a bridge to all right, now we're going to start getting a little bit serious. A little bit now, more serious. You know? And you know, I, I wonder back then if there were some parents who had their kids in the movie theater that reacted the same way we did. We're like, oh, hey, Whoa, the that's, cat, that's, we, got, we got fluffy at home. Yeah. The cat blood on the <laughs> wall was a little bit much. But knowing that, and again, we, we keep talking about the movie, and I, and I don't want to disregard the fact that there's the books, but you know, we watch the movies. But so. knowing that that story was going to advance, like, at, look, at some point, Look, Harry Potter got to a dark place, and at some point you have to transition. But I think that one was, it had enough humor. It, it got a little bit dark. We learned about, you know, Tom Riddle and Voldemort. Um, we saw some more hero stuff. Yeah, I mean, Harry had to battle the Basilisk and get the sword and we, use the fang and yeah, the and that was, I mean, yeah, that, that was, was yeah, that we, was pretty cool. Yeah. We definitely yeah. saw some hero stuff. I mean, you know... Ron Weasley's little sister dying. Yeah, was, I mean, that was yeah. like, you're talking a kid dying in a movie. That's some heavy stuff. So I think that was the biggest thing. And in, in, in the second one is that Chamber of Secrets is that they really started introducing us to some adult topics. Yeah. Um, I think it was I think it was well done. Um, you know, Dobby's addition in that movie, I think, really brought um, an interesting, you know, comical addition to yeah. the first uh, part of uh, of the movie. You know, they, they started off, you know, part two, you know, in another uncomfortable situation at the Dursleys. <laughs> what direction is yeah. this going to go? Yeah. And we knew nothing. Look, we didn't read the book, so I didn't know what like a house elf was. All of a sudden, you had like this yeah. goo this goofy he's, little he's creature beating right? himself he's with a like, with a lamp. He's like what? hitting himself with a lamp, and yeah. you're like oh, just dying. I mean, yeah. I'm dying laughing. I remember after that, I kind of looked at you, and I'm like, I'm not too comfortable about this guy, you know, beating on himself and <laughs> and beating himself up. And I'm like, what is this all about? I remember I was talking to you about that afterwards. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it showed bravery in the kids too. That was another thing. Yeah. Look, obviously. They're heading down into the Chamber of Secrets. Um, the, 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 the devil's 
rusher or whatever like yeah. that, you know. Um, I think one of the differences, I did watch, again, um, shout out to the guy um, who runs the Movie Flame YouTube channel. He did a great series on the differences between the movies and the books. Each one is like an hour long. So on top of rewatching all the movies, um, I also I also went back and watched all. Arnold the, is going to be pissed. You're yeah, not doing I, any work for I this watched, guy at all. I watched all the. Uh, oh, okay, Arnold, listen up. <laughs> well, heavy dress is a wizard, right? And then it's going to work. You're look, in, 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 in just in the interest of full disclosure, it's me and social media and digital marketing, and then our events executive director, and then Arnold. <laughs> so I don't get on a phone call. <laughs> with Arnold and discuss things. Our executive director discusses Arnold all the yeah. time, but just in well, full disclosure, in I, uh, to know? I've spoken with Arnold at the events. Uh, they've been short conversations. We don't hang out and smoke cigars. So yes, I've met him. Yes, I've spoken with him. No, we don't have business calls. That That's my executive director. So unfortu <laughs> fortunately, fortunately for me, he isn't calling me asking me about Harry Potter. Um, he will. But one of, you know, that was, well, uh, that you, was one of the things that did I jump out in the, in, the, in the book. I think it was a little bit different. They like didn't fall through. I think they they ran across it and it wasn't light. Maybe it was fire. So I do recall that was one of the uh, one of the differences in the book. Another difference from the um, and I'm going to try to go through these one by one. But I, I, I soaked up a lot of Harry Potter stuff <laughs> in the last. But I do believe in the book the um, the Basculus was significantly smaller. Okay, that was another thing. Like yeah, he it was it was portrayed slightly differently than like what I've seen in various fantasy iterations yeah, of it. Yeah, I think it. they said in the book maybe it was like 20 feet long, and then yeah. in the movie they made it like 60 feet tall. Yeah, but it was I more think, of a snake in this one. Yeah, and then I think, I don't know, something with um, the phoenix, like, not tearing the eyes out, but just attacking it. So, oh, okay. Uh, the the yeah. one thing that I did, um, and, I, and I may catch a little bit of criticism for this, but it, it seems like for the most part the stuff they took out of the book didn't super super impact the movies like they did overall like the reactions that i've seen is like they did a pretty good job with the movie that's what I've i think everybody too. will everybody will reach the same conclusion that the books are more in depth than the movies again i'm gonna go back and check out the yeah. audiobooks over time but at the Just, end of the day you got to do a three hour did, movie yeah and i think know? that was another yeah. discussion that they had yeah. like look how long do you want these movies to be if you were going to have every storyline so it seemed like um one of the big things that I got from the guy who did Movie Flame, and I apologize, um, I, f I forget the, the young man's name, but he did a great job. It seemed like in some of what they did a lot in the movies was they would, it wasn't like a changed detail here and there. They would just chop out like like whole... Yeah, whole bits of whole story. like bits. Yeah. Like they're, this piece of the book we, is, we don't need. Yep. As opposed to like we're gonna like a lot of books and movies, we'll, we're gonna change this detail and change mm -hmm. some of that. Um, some of that was changed. Another great thing he did is he talked about the differences and like how the books um, uh, describe people's appearances and how ah, they really were. Yeah. Um, Ron Weasley was supposed to be tall and thin. Um, Severus Snape was supposed to be in his 30s, and of course Alan Rickman in his 50s. So shout out to the, the guy running the movie Flame Channel. Did a great job because I w I did want to genuinely understand some of the differences between the books and the movies. Look, I just, there was just no time unless y'all wanted to wait, you know, <laughs> months. Um, but again, so in part two, you know, Harry has to go to battle with this um, basilisk. Um, we learn that he is not, in fact, the heir of Slytherin. Oh, but like you said, a great job of transitioning from kind of a story of you know this them in their first year of school at you know yep. hogwarts kind of to, silly fun yeah. okay yeah. things are things are getting serious business yeah. is picking up um i think um i think going into um part three the prisoner of azkaban it did it, it didn't feel like it quite got that dark and i and i you know i couldn't remember whether people were like oh azkaban gets it's so dark starts i think that's where it was and there was some dark tones but like when you watch when you watch the whole series prisoner of azkaban doesn't seem that dark you know no. uh, you know the half-blood prince um and of course the deathly hollows that's where it's like super super yeah. intense um goblet of fire with with cedric you know passing we'll get to that that yeah. was that but i didn't feel like prisoner of azkaban aside from um the the hippogriff you know being sentenced to yeah. death yeah. i didn't <laughs> feel like it was um was it was as yeah. dark as what some people had played it out to be yeah and you know it's 
it's kind of interesting. I wanted to get your guys' opinion on this. How do you guys feel when time travel is used in books oh, and movies? Yeah, it's, do you feel like sometimes it's a bit of a cop-out or a way out of a plot hole? Or do you think, in this one, for example, do you think it, it fit pretty well? I, I Look, I think that these books are so masterfully written that I think that sh she didn't need a, a cop-out for a, a plot okay. hole. Yeah. I think it made for a fun story about how Hermione was at every class yeah, all yeah. the time. Because they kept dropping those hints. It <laughs> like, would never explain it. Like, yeah. just giving you wait, a little yeah. nuggets here wait, and there. Wait, like, it I gotta be honest, like, when we watched Ron the movie, yeah. Ron looks, oh, when we watched the movie the first time, I didn't catch it as much. And look, that's on me, because I think... But it's harder a when you're doing Caban a for, yeah, Caban Caban gonna... for me was like the first one where I'm like, oh, okay, there's some stuff in this one that, yeah. I, that I can be on board with. Um, you know, I love Buckbeak the Hippogriff. I'm like, oh, this is a cool, like, this thing's mythical. Awesome. Yeah, this <laughs> thing's awesome, you know? Well, we can't um, forget, though, Sirius making his debut. And I mean, Gary Oldman, who's just amazing in everything. Yeah, everything, everything that he does. He does. Yeah. yeah, that was a really cool part is bringing in Gary Oldman. Obviously, and we joked nonstop about Alan Rickman, Hans. <laughs> yeah. um, but a lot of the actors, look, Daniel Radcliffe was, was new to me with Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, of course, a lot of the characters were, were relatively unknown. I, um, of course, well, I shouldn't say that. Dumbledore, uh, of course, played uh, <laughs> played the Emperor and and uh, and, and Gladiator, yeah. so I recognized him. And then replaced by what well, I believe it was Michael Gambon. Yeah, who him, did a good job. Who I love in British gangster movies. I will say that um, I will say that I did prefer the first Dumbledore. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought his tone of voice was more. Like a like a wise tone, yeah. Um, yeah more of like a a grandpa father figure type tone. But look, f being the, look somebody passes mid movie, and look they had at that yeah. time they had uh, you know six more to go. Yeah. So the guy who replaced him did a great job. But I like Prisoner of Azkaban. It yep. was it was uh, it was a fun movie. It got a little bit more serious. It it opened us up to the world of of how dark some of this stuff can mm -hmm. get look we had look, had we some had twists and turns we had werewolves we yep. had um uh, some that can control it some that can't yeah the uh, <laughs> uh what's the other werewolf and then an am animana animana gog animana pia yeah you yeah. <laughs> were gonna have to google yeah. um but i thought prisoner of azkaban was great and it was also um you know the, the the twists with finding out that Sirius was Harry's yeah. godfather. For those of us who haven't read the books, yeah, you know like, oh we didn't God, know he's his godfather in. and he betrayed him. And then yeah. you find out at the end, like no, 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 he didn't betray him. Yep. That's that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Um, and so that was a really good um, twist in that movie. And you know, and we'll we'll get into again some of the lessons a little bit later. Yep. But I I thought um, I thought Prisoner of Azkaban was a good transition from kids' movies to now they're teenagers and they're growing. Visibly, um, they were they were maturing. Yeah, this is where, yeah, you can yeah, really, you can really tell. That very... was another big thing. It's like you can't, like, you can lay out whatever timeline you want, but the kids are going to look older and the story, you know, sh should follow. Of course, yeah. they're following the story and the timeline. Um, but... I thought I thought Prisoner of Azkaban was was really good. A lot yep. of people said it was amongst their favorite. The one thing that I do want to kind of point out while we're on the topic, I had ones that I liked, but looking back, of course, when I was watching them, I'm like, oh, the first two or whatever. Yeah. I don't really, and maybe I need to watch them again like ten times and I, and maybe read the the books. I didn't feel like there was a very like a weak link. No, there in was these not movies. a letdown. And that was one of the comments oh. that we got quite a bit is people said this was my least favorite, yeah, or, this is yeah. my favorite. And look, I'm sure if I went back and watched them over and over and over, which I'm probably yeah. sure I will, um, that at some point I'm gonna start nitpicking which ones I like. But I think you're probably splitting hairs. I, I that's, that's the thing though too, is you just say that's their least favorite. They didn't say they hate it, they didn't say they dislike it, they just said it was yeah. their least favorite. Yeah. So I think it's it's still like like at like an eight out of ten, but just goes higher. Like my least yeah. favorite pizza. Yeah. Still pretty awesome. Yeah, it's still pretty well, awesome. unless it's Papa John's. We're not gonna not get into it. We're not gonna get into it. But um, but I th I thought um, Andrew, what year did um, what year did uh, 
Prisoner of Azkaban come out? June of 2004. June of 2004. Yeah. Had a $130 million budget, but yeah. still grows $797.5 million. Okay, so it's down a little bit as yeah. far as revenue. You know, what, well, one of what the I, things... What I'm thinking is, like you said, is I think the original, I think they're still counting all do the we know what, what do, did, um Do we know, and I'm sure you can, it's a simple Google, but do we know what time of the year these were released at? Uh, were these... Let's see, the first the first two were in back-to-back in November's, in okay. back-to-back years. Yeah. Then it went June 04, and then 05 went back to November for the fourth one. Oh, okay, yeah, and you know, and I so wonder we'll, if that has an as impact. As we go along, we'll look at the as far as for them. yeah, because yeah. as far as movie trends, um, look, the the blockbusters are always the summer, summer. type stuff and horror movies. Yeah, well, Lord you, of the Rings was Christmas time. Well, slow down a second. For his, uh, well, you know, the horror movies we yeah. like to release around yeah. Halloween in the fall time. And yep. then Christmas is another blockbuster time. Yeah, that's true. Um, of course. Well, here, this is uh, all Thanksgiving time. Yeah. yeah. This I mean, is November 18th of 05. You yeah, know. so people, I, look, it's it's no secret that people have more time to go to movies around Thanksgiving. Yeah, um, if Harry winter, Potter being miserable. a family movie, Thanksgiving is very much a family time. Yep, family um, tradition. People are getting together. So I think that's smart. And they may have the first couple said hey and this is pure speculation hey we'll release it around thanksgiving family time hey let's try let's try blockbuster time let's yep. release it in the summer hey people like seeing this and yeah. you know, kids are out of school running around you know let's yep. try it again at thanksgiving but um i i thought um i thought prison of azkaban was good i liked yeah the, again, the turns and the twists really got me sorry to be yeah, cut right, you off there yeah. but that really threw me off with serious black and and everybody else i that was really really threw me for a loop when i was watching it and a stinky rat uh-huh.